The will to push through any obstacle. The drive never to give in to defeat. These are the virtues that define the Olympic spirit, epitomized in the incredible story of former Olympian and American hero, Louis Zamperini. As a kid, I was always in trouble. I was rotten. <laughs> Who's down there? They started talking about what to do with me. And the police chief said, we've been chasing them all over town for years. I should just run him. <laughs> you train, you fight harder than those other guys, and you win. If you can take it, you can make it. As a complete unknown, Zamperini burst onto the world stage at the Olympics in 1936. The unwavering spirit that got him there led him to a record-breaking performance and carried him forward to a time when the world was at war and his country needed him most. You learn perseverance at running. Right in the middle of almost giving up, you try again and again until you overcome. And that's important in the war, too. The determination to come out first, to come out alive. His bomber, down in the Pacific, Zamperini survived on the open water for 47 days, only to be captured by the enemy. I got good news and bad news. Hello, mother and father. This is your Louis talking. This will be the first time in two years that you'll have heard my voice. I am now interned in a Tokyo prisoner of war camp and being treated as well as can be expected under wartime conditions. Zamperini's miraculous journey of resilience is one of the most inspirational stories ever known. It became a best-selling book that touched millions who have drawn upon its strength, including filmmaker Angelina Jolie, who now brings the remarkable story of Louis Zamperini to the big screen. We beat him by making it to the end of the war alive. If I can take it, I can make it. persevere, I think, is important for everybody. Don't give up. Don't give in. There's always an answer to everything. Interestingly, this is a non-traditional trailer for a very traditional movie, surprisingly so on that last part. Angelina Jolie has made a name for herself by taking risks both professionally and personally, yet she's playing it very safe here. In fact, I, it seems like I, I see influences from Clint Eastwood, and so of course she made Changeling with him, so I would be curious as to whether or not he has um, influenced her directorial style here. Uh, now, whether or not the safe bet will pay off for her, she's probably thinking, you know what, in the land of blood and honey, which really spoke to, her, you know, her humanitarian interests, didn't, was not well received with, you know, really anyone in any area, audiences, critics, or awards. So she might be like, you know what, let's just dial it back, make a movie that's successful, and then I can work from there and perhaps, you know, re-injecting my own personal interests and, you know, taking risks once again. But when, you know, a safe bet movie doesn't always guarantee box office. I mean, The Blind Side, very safe film in terms of visuals and had a strong, you know, inspirational message. So I can see some similarities there. And that movie was tremendously successful. But of course, I think that was, you know, a story that was new, whereas this prisoner of war aspect story, not so new. I'll get to that in to a moment. And also, but you had Sandra Bullock, who, you know, is an audience favorite. That was kind of her return to form. Very big deal. And so that was kind of a perfect storm. Because also, if you go and you look at Seabiscuit, also a very safe movie. Uh, that did not do well, uh, despite, you know, again, true story. But, you know, Tobey Maguire, not a big audience draw. He's never been a big audience draw. Spider-Man was the draw for those films. So you have to wonder, is this a sea biscuit or is it a blind side? Or maybe it's a changeling, also a film that didn't do particularly well. That was, you know, the as I said, the Clint Eastwood, Angelina Jolie pairing to date. Now, the one thing, now, as far as a Prisoner of War movie goes, you know, Bridge Over the River Kwai is... Really an amazing piece of uh, filmmaking. I don't see how any film could hope to compete. Uh, and it looks like so far this one is not competing with it. I mean, if you want to see a great Prisoner of War movie, go rent Bridge Over the River Kwai and just Google Zamperini. 
Uh, but there was one thing, one line in the trailer that really sparked my interest, and that's where Zamperini said that he had to apply the competitive spirit of athletics uh, to war, to, to surviving, to being the one who was there at a very different type of finish line. So I really, that, that I found very interesting. But so while it was there in the, and I don't even know if it's in the actual movie, that's just an interview with Zamperini. So while I thought that was a very interesting, you know, uh, dialogue, I don't see that kind of level of, you know, that being driven home stylistically in, in the visuals. You know, it seems, as I said, just very safe. But still, they might be, you know, the script is, you know, at least the first pass seems to be from the Coen brothers, and there's just a lot of undeniable talent here. Although, surprisingly, not on screen. You have no big names drawing you in here, which I think is another big hurdle for this movie. I mean, I applaud Angelina Jolie for simply directing a film and not, oh, I'm mostly going to star in it. I think that's really important if uh, women want to become taken, or be taken seriously as filmmakers. So I, I, I think that's great. Uh, and you know what? We'll see how this movie does, and I think we'll have a lot of eyes on it simply because of her involvement and that she's working with the Coen brothers. I mean, behind the camera, there's a more interesting story, I think. That's the worst thing for this movie. There's a more interesting story in real life and history and a more interesting story behind the camera than there is on screen. But we'll see. By the way, I also wanted to point out uh, I, I saw in the comment section of another place this trailer was posted that someone said that this voiceover was really taking them out of it. And the reason this trailer is cut this way is because it was presented during NBC's Olympic coverage. Uh, and so obviously because Zamperini was an Olympian, they want to try and get that same audience, get, get this movie on their radar so they'll go see it when it comes out, uh, you know, in award season later this uh, year. So they've cut it like a sports spotlight. You know, of course, for those of us who aren't really into sports, you see them during the Super Bowl, and sports fans, of course, see them all the time as, a, as, a, as a, the normal way that, uh, you know, sports coverage gets the audience kind of in the mood to witness an athlete in their element when they actually do perform. Because, you know, it's a lot of times sports uh, happen very quickly. A race is just a few moments, you know, so you need to fill the time and set the stage. So I guess they're trying to set the stage for the movie. But anyway, someone said that the comment, uh, the commentator really took them out of the trailer. And I thought that was fascinating because they made no reference to the fact that it was Tom Brokaw, one of NBC's most famous newscasters. So uh, Tom Brokaw, I hope, you know, he, he and his team should take that as a wake-up call. Even though he's to some degree retired, he is not doing a very good job keeping himself in the public eye. It, I mean, if, I guess maybe, you know, I don't know, do people still know who Walter Cronkite is? I mean, it also speaks to the larger news industry as a whole and uh, people's lack of, you know, interest in them these days and also, you know, lack of credibility, you know, that they're not, you know, these icons of, you know, truth and information uh, like they're supposed to be. So anyway, Tom, that's, that's Tom Brokaw. He used to be famous. All right, so that's my review of the Unbroken trailer. Uh, leave your thoughts down below how, how it comes across to you. Do you think Angelina Jolie is smart to play it safe? Do you think this looks like an interesting film? Or do you agree that perhaps the more interesting stories are behind the camera and in history? And what did you think of that applying the, uh, the drive, uh, the athletic drive to war? Do you find that as interesting as I did? And do you think this movie can pull that off, uh, at, you know, as a, as a narrative? So write your thoughts down below. You can check out some more episodes right now.